Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you a game between Jean Vlad Christian and Anton Theodor. The game was played in Romanian Championship from 2018 round 4. Let's see the game. As we know in every stage of the game we need a plan. In an opening we need to develop our pieces, make castle and connect the rooks. The shortest version of these three rules is to take your least active piece and place it on the most active square. Vlad opened with d4, allowing his dark square bishop and his queen to enter the game. Knight to f6, developing a piece, controlling e4 and d5 squares, c4, controlling another central square, e6, this is a valid pawn move, allowing the dark square bishop to go to the most forward available square on b4. If white plays knight to c3 and black bishop to b4, we have the Nimzo Indian defense. But white continue with knight to f3, developing the knights towards the center. As we know in an opening, we should develop our knights before our bishops. This is a rule stated by Lasker a long time ago. Bishop to b4 check, and we have the Bogo Indian defense. White has several options at his disposal. He can reply with bishop to d2, knight bd2 and knight to c3. In the game, white goes for the main line with bishop to d2, blocking the check and black defends the bishop with c5. This is the Vitolin's variation of the Bogo Indian defense. This pawn move allows the queen to develop on a 5d8 diagonal. Beside this move, the most popular moves are queen to e7, defending the bishop, and a5. And if white takes the bishop, black recaptures, and he will have the a5 open for his rook. White took on b4, and black recaptured. White can continue the development of his pieces with knight, knight bd2, g3, intending to put the bishop on the long diagonal, or e3 trying to put the bishop on e2 or d3 squares. In the game, a3 was played, asking black what he wants to do with his pawn. White would love to develop his knight to c3 instead of d2, and this is another reason why a3 was played. And black took on a3, white recaptured with the rook. He didn't want it to take with the B pawn because he would have an isolated pawn on the A file. Also, white has the A file open for his rook. Black king is safe and E3, allowing the light score bishop to develop. D6, controlling C5 and E5 squares, intending to play in the future E5. Knight to C3, developing another piece, and black does the same with knight to C6. Bishop to e2, preparing short castle, e5, attacking the center, and since there is no danger for white, he can continue his development, and he did this by castling. In this position, white has more pieces into the game, and he has the a file. He can continue to move his queen to c2 or d2, and put the f rook on a1, and put pressure on a7 pawn. Black continue the development of his bishop to g4 and white kicks it away with h3 and in the future he might play g4 and knight to h4 attacking the bishop. h3, bishop to h5 and queen to d2. White finishes opening and he intends to bring the f rook to a1 putting pressure on this weak pawn. Since we are moving to the middle game, the plan in this stage of the game is different. First of all, we need an object of attack. And second, we need to find a way how to attack this object with our pieces. The easiest object of attack are weaknesses, which are backward, advanced, isolated and double pawns. And weak squares. In this position, black has weak pawns on a7 and d6, and he has some weak squares on d5 and f5. For f5 we have the situation where black can play g6 
defending this square, but in the same time he will create some dark square weaknesses around his king. In this position the most accessible weakness to attack is the a7 pawn. So white should play rook f to a1. If black plays a6, this is good for us, b7 pawn will be weak and white can attack it with rook to b3. Let's see what white choose to play the game. Rook to e8, bringing the rook on the e-file. Another way was to move the queen to b6 and finishing the opening by connecting the rooks. Rook to d1. White does not want to go with the plan of attacking a7 and he chose to protect his queen. It seems that white wants to take on e5. Black continue with a5. We can notice that this pawn move weakens b5 and b6 squares and white can attack this b7 pawn with rook to b3. Another way for black instead of this a5 move was to exchange the light square bishops by playing e4 and after knight to h2 bishop takes on e2. In this position white has several options to play g4 attacking the bishop followed by knight to h4 another one is a rook to b3 attacking b7 or to take on e5 which one is better usually in any position we need to attack or take something so all these three moves are good there is another rule saying that playing in the center is the best thing to do because of this rule vlad took on e5 so we have d takes on e5 d takes on e5 g4 attacking the bishop bishop to g6 knight to h4 attacking the bishop but the knight on this position is unprotected and black can respond with knight to e4 attacking the queen if uh, white takes the the knight let's see that line black can take the knight and uh, the queen and the rooks can be exchanged and we have an equal position that's why in the game queen to e7 was played black didn't want it to exchange queens he plans to bring a rook on the d file knight to d5 attacking the queen black took the knight white plays an intermediate move taking the bishop attacking the queen h takes on g6 and c takes on d5 we can notice that white has a pass pawn on the d file and he also has a pawn majority on the king side and black has a pawn majority on the queen side rook d to d8 pinning the pawn and black knight does not have to move d6 the pass pawn goes forward queen to f6 usually when you have a pass pawn your main focus should be to push it forward in our case if white pushes the pawn to d7 and black attacks it one more time with knight to b7 which is not a good move white can defend the pawn easily with bishop to b5 in the game white played directly bishop to b5 attacking the knight but this move allows black to give his rooks for white queen which happened with rook takes on d6 queen takes a rook to d8 queen takes on d8 knight takes on d8 and rook takes on a5. We have an endgame position where white has two rooks for the queen, a bishop versus a knight, and the same number of pawns for each side. The plan in an endgame is to attack opponent weak pawns, and for us is to push our pass pawns. In this position there are no pass pawns so the only plan is to attack black weak pawns black has an isolated pawn on b7 and an advanced one on e5 so these two pawns are white's targets knight to e6 bringing the knight back into the game bishop to f1 trying to redeploy the bishop to g2 looking at b7 and in the same time freeing b5 square for the rook to come here and attack this pawn e4 the queen 
attacks b2 pawn and bishop to g2. White doesn't defend this pawn and counter attacks e4. Black took on b2 and white took on e4. In this position, white has a pawn majority on the king side and black has a pass pawn on b7. Queen to b4, double attacking the rook and the bishop, but white has an intermediate move with rook to a8 check, king to a7 and bishop to g2. b5, black starts pushing his pass pawn, rook a to a1. White wants to attack the queen with the rook to b1 and the other rook can go to a d4 and then to b4, putting more pressure on this b5 pawn. Queen to e7 usually moves back are not good. The queen was well placed on this square. Black intends to, to defend this pawn with the knight and the knight will be protected by the queen. Rook a to b1 attacking the pawn, defending, rook to d4, intending to block this pawn, and g5. In an endgame, we should be careful with pawn moves. The part that attacks can and should move pawn forward, and the part that defends should not push pawns. Another way for black was to try to open some lines towards the king and try to give a perpetual. For example, after f5 instead of this move we would have rook d to b4 like in the game queen to d7 defending the pawn and looking at g4 square bishop to f1 attacking one more time the pawn king to a6 bishop takes on b5 knight takes on b5 rook takes on b5 f takes on g4 h takes on g4 and queen takes on g4 check king to f1 and white king is opened Queen to h3, king to e2, king to g4 check, king to e1, king to g2, king to e2. If white king tries to run away, the f to pawn will drop. Queen to g4 check, king to d2, queen to f3, king to c3, g5. Black wants to take on f2 and with this move make some room for the king to escape after rook to h1 check and uh, in this position there are good chances for black to draw in the game as we saw g5 was played and bishop to f1 attacking the pawn queen to c5 rook d to b4 queen to c6 bishop takes on b5 knight takes on b5 rook takes on b5 and f6 the pawn was attacked so the pawn is protected now white should continue his plan to attack opponent weak pawns and push his best pawns. White can attack g7 or start pushing his e pawn. In the game, white continue with rook to f5. And after e4 and e5, if black takes on e5, the rook can take on g5. So the rook is well placed on this square. Queen to c2 attacking the rook, queen to a1. Queen to b2, rook to d1, queen to c2, and rook to d4. And both rooks are protected. Queen to c1 check, king to g2, queen to c6 check, rook f to d5, blocking the check, queen to b7. The queen remains on this diagonal. e4, and here it goes. The e pawn goes forward. Queen to c6, the queen doesn't want to leave this diagonal. So the king has to get out from this pin and not receive any check. And white manages to do this with an interesting rook maneuver. One rook goes behind the pawn and the other rook goes on the first rank to defend the king against any check. And the king will go to the first rank. Rook to d3, queen to b7, rook to e3, queen to c6, rook to d1, king to g6 king to g1 so the king is out of the pin white can continue the push with e5 queen to c2 attacking the rook rook d to e1 king to a6 e5 f takes on e5 rook takes on e5 and black has two double pawns on the g file 
and they can be attacked easily by the rooks. Queen to c3, attacking h3 pawn, a rook 5 to e3 defending, queen to d2, a rook to e6 check, king to e7, a rook 1 to e5 attacking the pawn, queen to c1 check. Another way for black to stop the capture on g5 was to attack e6 rook and this could have been done from here with queen to a2. King to g2, queen to c8, stopping the capture, rook to d6, intending to double on the fifth rank and grab the pawn, queen to c4, rook d to d5, g6, controlling f5 and h5 squares, rook takes on g5, white is two pawns up, queen to e4 check, king to g3, queen to e1, black wants to give check on g1, trying to give some perpetual, rook g to e5 attacking the queen, queen to g1, king to f3, and if black tries to give a check on h1, we would have king to e2, it's very important not to defend the h3, and if black takes this pawn is lost, after queen takes we have rook to e7, king to a6, the king cannot go on the 8th rank due to the mate, g5 check, king to h5, rook to a7 check and pick up the queen, king to g4, rook takes on h3, king takes on h3, rook to d4 check, forcing the king to go on the 2nd rank, king to g2, rook to h4, king to g1 only move, king to f3, king to f1 only move and mate. In the game, king to g7 was played, rook to d7 check, king to f6, attacking the rook, but this is a blunder. After rook d to e7, black gave this check and resigned. One possible continuation would be king to e2, and taking on h3 is impossible due to g5 mate. That's why black has to guard this square. The only move is queen to g2, g5 check, queen takes on g5, rook 7, e6 check, king to f7, rook takes on g5, king takes on e6, and we can stop here. White is a rook up and a pawn, so he's easily winning. So this was the game between Jean Vlad Christian and Anton Theodor. I hope you found this video useful. Please watch other games from my channel and leave some comments and suggestions in the comments section. See you next time. Bye.